Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about the materials that make up our poker chips. Now I pulled some out of my trusty bag of science, let's call it, where I want to show you the materials. We're going to start with the low end. All right, so you get a chip like this. So this is a bicycle chip and you can see it is plastic. It feels very lightweight and the material feels like plastic, looks like plastic, the texture on the broken part feels like broken plastic. You can see how the different materials are different colors. So the white and the red have separated here and have cleaved, you know, like that. And it is pretty interesting how these materials all come together, but it is plastic, very durable, but lightweight and it doesn't have a great texture. Okay, these are, these are fine. You can play poker with these. There's nothing wrong with these. Then we move up to kind of the same format plastic chips. These are often, are, I call them next gen for a long time, but now they're like the unicorn chips. Some of the unicorn chips on Amazon have stuff like this. And again, it's just plastic. These actually have a sticker label. Like you can see, I just peeled this one off. So the chip is manufactured and then they stick these sticky things on and they're called labels. Okay. So unlike the bicycle where this is all just, you know, one solid plastic mold, well, maybe not so solid, but a plastic mold, these are plastic molds with a sticker. Okay. So we have plastic chips. And then we move down to, see, and this is a label. This is just a sticker that can stick on chips. Then we move down to metal slug ABS chips. ABS obviously referring to a plastic, metal slug referring to this metal slug. These have accidentally been shot by a 45 ACP, just, you know, for science. It's for science. So the coin inlay right here, the coin metal slug ABS chip, this thing weighed a lot. It was like 15 grams. I almost said ounces. It weighs a pound. 15 grams. I almost said it again. And these weigh like 13.5 grams. And there are some others that weigh like 11.5 grams. But the metal slug there is for rigidity and for weight. And again, very plasticky, very similar to the materials of like this bicycle plastic chip. Very plasticky. Now we move up to a China clay. China clays have the same idea as the plastic chips, just the plastic feels a little bit more textured. It has kind of a chalky feel to it, and it smells kind of like PVC. There's some VOC going on here. And again, the chip is manufactured, and then they stick on these sticker labels. And I don't know about China clays anymore. I'm kind of, they can, you break them pretty easily. And uh, I mean, during normal games, you're not gonna break them. I'm just saying you can grab them in your fingers, and I'm not very strong. You know, and if I'm not very strong and I can, you know, break a chip, you know, I'm just pointing out that's probably one of the weaker chips that I've shown you so far. Then we move up again to ceramics. You've seen my custom ceramic chips. These are, they're called ceramics, but they're actually a very hard plastic. You can see the white plastic right here. They use plastic blanks and use a dye sublimation process to transfer the image onto the chip. Lovely. And so, they, these are called ceramics. I really like them. They, they've proven to be very durable. One of my family favorites are these Tiki King chips. You guys know. So that's the ceramic. So, so far we have plastic, metal slug ABS chips, China clays, ceramics, and we're going to move into the premium compression molded clay chips. These have a nice weight to them. So they weigh similar to the ceramics, anywhere from like nine to 10, 10 and a half grams. Uh, the older ones where they put more lead in them, yes, they Paulson historically, I don't know about their modern recipe, but historically their chips would test positive for lead and they were heavier. So I don't know, I, I don't know their modern recipe, but so if you have some old Paulson's just maybe, maybe not let your kids chew on them. So you can see very, you know, a nice, nice material right here all the way through no metal slug for weight. This is actually classic poker chips. One of the few manufacturers that still make premium compression molded clay chips that are available to the public. In my opinion, worth every penny. Paulson, blue chip company, uh, both owned by the same company now, no longer offer chips to the public. And you can see here the materials used. It's very similar to classic poker chips, just a nice homogenous blend of their proprietary clay that they use. And these actually have inlays. So you can see how when this plastic cover, this is all stamped, made together. So they'll stamp it all together 
and this is practically part of the chip. So unlike, see how this just separates? So unlike labels that just peel off like this, can you see how this label just peels off like this? It's actually stuck to the chip like glue. It's pretty impressive. So true inlays, this one happens to be hot stamped. Very nice compression molded premium clay chips. And that's what we call. So when people refer to, so there's lots of, lots of discussion about this. Sorry. So clay is one of the is a very common additive in plastics. Okay. So even these plastics like this can you can put a small amount of clay in here and it adds some nice properties to the plastic. All right. So these can be clay. The china clays can have some clay in there. Like I said, it's a very common additive for plastic. Ceramics could have clay in there because they're very common. It's a very common additive. And the compression molded, the pre, what I call premium compression molded clay chips have supposedly clay in them as well. So the term clay, I think, was way overplayed for a long time by marketing people and salespeople trying to convince people to buy this stuff, trying to compare it to this stuff, the premium compression molded clay chips. Now, as far as the materials, that's a quick summary. Okay, so questions arise. Oh, here's a nice broken ceramic. You can see, I think this is the one that I sawed into with a hacksaw. Yeah, hacksaw, yeah, with, so obviously not like your china, like dishes, ceramics, just obviously a hard plastic. Now, when people ask me, well, which one should I get? That's a silly question because I can't answer that for you. You have to pick out your favorite ideas and stick with it. Do you have children in the house? Do you have things that, you know, do you have a hard concrete floor or something or, you know, people who are very hard on your chips, you might want to get just some metal slug ABS chips because they're pretty durable. They're plastic. They're what they're very resistant to staining and wear and all that stuff, you know? So sometimes those are really solid, you know, ceramics, I feel like are the same way, but they're more expensive. So then all of a sudden it comes into, well, what's your budget? What's your preference? Do you like certain designs more than other designs? You know, if you can buy a design that you like for less than, you know, a design you don't like, why would you not spend less and get a design you like? And then other <laughs> discussion points come in where you can buy used casino chips, you know, understanding, you know, for me, I always think of it as like, all right, well, this is potential lead exposure. You want to keep kids away from them. And, but they retain their value. So you go out, you buy 500 used casino chips, let's say for $500, you can sell them again for pretty close to $500, less your eBay fees, whatever, 13%. So to, you know, play with a nice premium set, real casino chips, and then just turn around and sell them for, you know, a tiny, tiny loss, if not a gain. Why would you not do that? You know, it's like, you know, it's costing you very little if you're gonna resell them. They seem to retain their value is what I'm trying to say. As far as like classic poker chips, I'm not sure if they retain their value quite as well as Paulson, but they also, you know, hold some value. Whereas some of these casino chips, you just see them on sale for a dime a dozen. All right. So it really depends on what you like. Yeah, I can't, you know, I <laughs> really, I try sometimes and it's just, you, it really comes down to what you like and your needs as a poker player. Now, to make a fair point, I've played poker with all of these. The cheapest plastic poker chips in the world serve as poker chips. It chip, round, colors, you can tell what's going, easy, done, right? And then we move into the denomination ones and then obviously, you know, all the way through the range, the high end stuff, it all works. So. That said, we usually play a hand. And so we're just going to use some broken chips. We're going to get a variety of plastic chips here. Let's just leave that label on right there. And just we're going to play a broken hand here. All right. Let's get some cards. What are we playing here? Gold deck. the jokers here. Copac. Copac 100% plastic face cards. We are very quickly going to shuffle. I like these videos to be standalone, so if you're not familiar with this channel, this is called a weave shuffle. 
And we're just, that's good enough, okay? We're going to deal Jane Doe a hand. We're just gonna play some basic Texas Hold'em. Obviously, we're not gonna play for anything as this is YouTube and <laughs> that would be funny. All right, here we go. do -si do and a king. And then we have the turn. Oh, getting spicy on the turn. And we river a six. I'm sure that completed somebody's something. I have a king. I'm going to lose to Jane Doe's aces because I always lose to her. Ha <laughs> ha! Wait. Ace, two, three, four. Oh, phew, it was a six, not a five. All right. Chop that up as a win. As usual, thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel. I always like to give patrons who like credit, credit. And thank you to everybody for watching. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe and you can visit my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. See you in the next one.